Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duart. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Success Thursday, the big question of the week. This week with Mike Lyons. Hey, Mike, welcome back. Vasco, how are you? So, of course, we, we're going to talk about success in a minute. But uh, first, let's start with one of the major tools we use to get to that success. And we've talked about that a few times this week already. And I think we should once more. Uh, that's the retrospectives, of course. So, Mike, share with us what's your favorite retrospective format and why? Yeah, thanks. I, you know, uh, I, I'll... I'll answer the question, but I, I want to sort of suggest that the format, like the four L's or the wedding retro or the sailboat or the starfish, let me just say this. I could care less. I really could care less which one you use. Here's the format I want every Scrum Master to take away. First question you should ask in every single retro is, did we make the improvement we committed to last time? Then do whatever you want. But here's why I'm so dogmatic about this one. And maybe you Scrum Masters are rolling your eyes right now and laughing a little bit to yourselves. If you don't do the, the question that I just said, if you don't start with, did we make the improvement we committed to last time? It won't matter how engaging or how many Miro mural boards you create or you use the Nightmare Before Christmas theme or the Back to the Future theme and you use the four, none of that will matter because people will stop coming to your retros. You must commit to an improvement item and then action that improvement item. It is the most important thing you could do in the retro. And uh, one of the things that we need to focus on is of course, how to create the environment where people are sharing improvements that they care about yeah, because they good. need to be caring about that. And then how we help them take ownership and actually work on it because oh, at the end of the day, let's yes. not forget that scrum masters are not the ones to do the improvement. Yes. It's the people doing the work as we've discussed this week already. So you know, how do you do you that? Know, that's a big deal right there. And I, I just really think this idea of if we, if we every, let's say two weeks, if we every two weeks look back and go, did we make that improvement? And the team knows that we're serious about it. They are, they are, that's going to increase ownership. That's going to make, that's going to encourage new ideas. If if we if we don't action them and we never go back to them, well, I know I would stop. I'd stop suggesting things too. I'd be like, well, whatever. Nobody cares. And that is a very important statement, right? Because the let's say the reason to exist of that retrospective or any kind of reflection and improvement work that we do is because we understand that whatever the situation is today, it, it can never be as good as if we work on it and make it slightly better. There's this compounding yeah. interest idea, right? If you, if you get 1% better every day of the year, how much better will you be by the end of the year? So oh, that, boy. That, is, that is really kind of, of a, a mindset that we also need yes. to bring to our work. And one of the things we've already talked about, and, and you, you had that phrase, ready, ready retro on the Tuesday episode. We've already talked about this concept of having retros happening all the time. Small things, small conversations, but all the time having small things that change. And we don't necessarily need to be super, need to be super formal about it, but we do need to bring that mindset to the discussion, us Scrum Masters okay. are playing a role in modeling how others see and look at improvement ideas. Absolutely right. So all of this we do because, of course, we want to be successful. <laughs> and uh, we know that there's many other things that need to happen before we can be successful. And I guess that's one of the, the parts of the question that we have for you today, Mike, the big question of the week, how do you define success for yourself as a scrum master? Oh boy, I'll tell you what, this is a good one. Um, as a scrum master, and uh, even as I sort of gained more experience and got more 
uh, experience as an agile, I, I consider myself a delivery uh, person. I'm more I'm more in aligned with delivering than I am any form of like coaching. Um, success is when uh, I am not needed anymore, and I'm off on my next on my next client or my next my next team. Uh, it's it's my my opinion that um, Scrum Master is a, a exists to get teams to where they are self sufficient and are doing the accountability of Scrum Master on their own, and it's no longer a role that's needed on the team. Um, it's it. I know that there's different uh, points of view on this topic, and and I welcome other points of view. This is my opinion after you know however many years of doing this and being on global large scale implementations. The sooner you don't need me, the better. So uh, having that as kind of the north star where we want to go, what are some of the things that you're always yeah. looking at, paying attention to, or even measuring? to tell you if the team really is moving in that self-sufficiency direction. Yeah, I, thank you for that. I like to use the the five events of Scrum as a sort of grounding uh, like vehicle for that measurement. And so, for example, we'll just run through them real, real quick then. So the, our first one at sprint planning. So at sprint planning, some of the things I'm looking for at the teams are um, have they already seen this work before they commit to this work? Um, that will tell me that they've got some form of, you know, typically what's called a refinement uh, approach. It doesn't have to be a, a meeting, but it's some refinement approach. Okay, so sprint planning, has the team seen this work before? Another thing I'd look for at sprint planning is, are the teams committing to a goal that the team came up with? And these are a little bit more advanced constructs, right? If you read Scrum Guides, I'm, I'm aligned to Scrum Guides here. Um, but I see many scrum masters that sprint planning is okay, John, you're going to pull story 1721, Sarah, you've got 1723 and, and John, how many points is that? And Sarah, how many points is that? And it's like, Oh, I don't care about any of those things. I care about, did the team commit to a goal? How many user stories is it? I could care less. How many story points is it? Oh, I could care even less about that. Did you commit to a sprint goal? Okay. So that's sprint planning. In the daily scrum, the first metric I would look at is, does the scrum master talk? No, they should say nothing. In fact, Vasco, this might surprise some scrum masters. Did you know scrum masters, they're not even invited to the daily scrum. You're not even invited, let alone share your screen and show the JIRA board. You're not even invited unless you're pulling work as a developer. It's not for you. Same with product owner. Product owner is not invited to the daily scrum. They, they, unless they're pulling work as a developer. Now, look, I'm being a little, I'm being a little glib there. Uh, uh, of course, you're going to go to the daily scrum, yes, but you shouldn't be the one talking. So those would be some things in the daily scrum. Let's keep going. Let's talk about the um, the sprint itself, which is the you know one of the events. The smaller the sprint, the more effective, the the faster the feedback loops. So if I see a four-week sprint versus a one-week sprint, that, that tells me some things. So four-week sprinters, you know, there could be valid reasons for that, and there's trade-offs. So I'd be wondering, like, what are, what are some of the benefits of a four-week sprint? If you're on a one-week sprint, again, this is the third event of, of Scrum, right, the sprint. What are the benefits? Can, can we articulate what the benefits are? Yeah. Okay, fourth I, I, would even, Scrum. I would even ask, why, yeah. why aren't we on a one-day sprint? Oh gosh! I mean, oh, delivering yeah, every day bold. would be the that's ideal, right? Wow, maybe I don't know. Yeah, maybe. So if if we take if we take the whole idea of feedback and just you yeah. know, move the knob all the way from ten to like ten point five and then to eleven, then the, <laughs> the the rational thing to do is to to think, okay, we need to go faster for feedback. Now, I, I, I'm not arguing that the story should be uh, one hour or 15 minutes. That's not what right, I'm trying right. to say. <laughs> but, but let's not forget that software is, and at least all agilists should, at least in principle, agree with this, software should be incrementally delivered. So de delivering yeah. an increment of a story is as valid as delivering an increment of a product. That's, that's true. I, so... And 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 so if on that example the team the sprint time box was one day, and the scrum master could articulate the benefits of what we mean by that, then we would all high five each other. You know, again, we're talking about like just the events and sort of the metrics. I think that's a great one. Let's just let's wrap this section up real quick. Sprint review, you know, our fourth event. Um, we're 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 looking for things like we're talking about the work we didn't complete. 
We're talking about how we might improve our work. And that's part of the sprint review. It's not just a demo. And then finally, the sprint retro. Are you skipping them? <laughs> that would be a problem. Don't skip them. Um, and in your retro, are you committing to an action item that you can show, demonstrate, you know, sprint over sprint that you've got one, at least one improvement item? So those are metrics I would use. And I just used the events. We could talk about roles. We could talk about artifacts if you want. Um, but those those should give our team members out here listening some good things to think about. Um, success means you pretty much don't need me anymore. Absolutely. And it's good to challenge our thinking every now and then. That doesn't mean that we were going to drop two week sprints, but it's no. a valid question to ask, what, why aren't we having a one day sprint? Or why is the Scrum Master speaking in the daily Scrum? Or And so on and so forth. And I think that's one of the reasons why we ask this question every single day. Because if we're not pushing the boundaries, then we can't really expect the developers, the testers, the product owners, and everybody else to push yeah. the boundaries either. Oh gosh, I mean, isn't that right? It, it, you know, and Scrum Masters, they, they should be asking why you have testers on the team. Why don't you just have engineers who test? There's no such thing as development and test. There's just development. Development means tested code, like, hello. Okay, so these have got to be, <laughs> you've got to be challenging your teams. You've got to, you've got to do that into where they're, and eventually they're challenging themselves. That is a challenging set of questions for all of us out there. And I challenge you to ask those questions from yourself. Thank you for sharing, Mike. So, it was so fun. Awesome. Part of a successful Scrum Master job is to help the product owner. Tomorrow we explore that critical role in Scrum, the product owner role. Tune in to learn about product owner anti-patterns, what you can do to help the product owner, and a real life example of what a great product owner is and what made it so. Tomorrow on our Friday product owner episode. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.